Uh, hi, uh, yesterday I uploaded a green screening tutorial for Jashaka and this is basically the final output of it with a lot of green around the edges. Uh, in the tutorial I'm kind of a bit, there's a part of me, there's part of it where I'm trying to fumble around trying to get rid of this. Um, my computer was running extremely slow because I'm trying to green screen HD, a HD clip, which is not an easy task on a computer that's five years old while doing some screen capture and so it was running stupidly slow and I couldn't really do it uh, I was a bit annoyed with it and so I retried it today before I decided to record the video and in Blue Peter style uh, here's one I basically made earlier so this is what we made yesterday if I click that off and this is what we made today so as you can see the the green's virtually gone it's it's really hard to see. There's small tinges here and there, but for for all purposes, really, it's pretty much completely gone. And the fact is, the tinges are in the ha the hair itself. Uh, I'm not an expert compositor, but I don't think I think compositing within the hair is actually fairly difficult. So the fact that it's managed to do the majority of everything, I'd give it a thumbs up for that. Um, the way I did this was I went to desktop. Went to Kia. Let me just bring the whole brand new thing in. Uh, what I did is uh, da -da 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 -da. I'm going to see if I can reset this somehow. So I went to CPU Kia. I got my color dropper and I clicked my color dropper. So now it's like got rid of all this green, but it's also got rid of this here, which is a bit annoying. So what you need to do is we went to the axis. And I did this in here rather than the animation module because in the animation module, the comp the module is having to do chroma keying and it's having to then put a layer underneath and do so. I found it to be a bit faster to do it in the keying module and then transfer the results across just like in the original. So what I did is I went to the axis and if you notice, we just want to get rid of green. We don't want to get rid of red. We don't want to get rid of blue. So theoretically, this range should be zero, and this range should be zero, and therefore we'd only be getting rid of the green. So literally, that's what you got to do: is you got to bump that down as far as you can go. And once you see it, once you get to a certain certain threshold, the green starts reappearing. So literally, you got to find that cutoff point. There we go. And the same thing with the blue. Now this is slowing down a bit simply because of the screen capture recording software. But again, here we go. So we've cut these down from what was 256 to 54. So we can see there's a huge range has been cut down. Now we want the green range to be really high. So I'm going to take the, this upper range and put it to 500. This lower range, I'm going to decrease. And as you can see, as I'm decreasing it, the green's being cut away, but parts of our image are also being cut away. I don't know if uh, you might. It'd be better to watch this in 720p, and you can see that I'll, I'll I'll make it really bad. So as you can see, parts of our image are being cut away. So the way we need to do this is let it cut away a little bit of the image, and you think, oh no, the way you gotta then comp you need to compensate for this now is by decreasing the image, uh, because part of that image is made up of red, green, and blue. That's not a full green image. So if we then decrease the range of our red and our blue, we can help seal up the image there. We are getting some specs here. So it literally is now is just um, a point of fine tuning. Uh, I think this is the closest thing you can get. So that's basically what I've got. So 0, 070, 66, 554. And then what I'd do is I'd come over here, add in my chroma key, and I'd stick it in there. And yeah, I know I've got some slightly different results, but that's because I've been playing around with it a bit. What I then did is, so this is basically what I then had on top of my key. And you can see the greens there, and it's quite visible and stuff. So what I then did is I clicked on colorize. And that brings a person into our scene. Then I clicked on Gaussian blur. Now notice I've got little specks down here, little specks on Gaussian blur and they disappear. Uh, the Gaussian blur is at minus five. Uh, it depends on how big your specs are and how many specs you've got. Uh, you can go down to as little as minus two which gives you a small amount of Gaussian blur. A small, small amount but will get rid of any of these specs that you have 
hanging around here or there if you have the odd spec. <coughs> Another way to do it is add the Gaussian blur before you do the chroma key. Have basically the same effect, probably slightly better effect, because it will just literally blend all the green to one, so it should be easier for the thing to key. And that's a very quick and easy way to get a very good key. And this, let's be honest, compared to that, is a much better key. I'll bring them both to the front first. So as you can see, we have this green outline. doesn't really look that nice. looks a bit shoddy. But this one actually looks a lot better, a lot nicer, and a lot more natural. So it, you do have a bit of green tinge there, but with a bit more, I think, control with the colorize and the chroma key, you could probably get rid of that. I was just very unhappy with what, how I left it yesterday. Um, it was simply because my computer at the time couldn't do it, seeing as I do a lot of my tutorials off the cuff. But this I'm a lot happier with, and it literally was once my computer was running full, like I didn't have uh, Cam Studio running, and Jashark was running optimally. It literally took me, as you can see, about less than a minute to fine tune it to get rid of the majority of the stuff. And it's a really good trick for anyone who's doing some chroma keying is using the Glossian Blur. Now, for anyone who's got After Effects, uh, a really good way of doing this with the After Effects is chroma key with a bunch of, with a with some Gaussian blur, especially if your chroma key is a really bad backdrop, then add in your layer underneath and use the top layer as a matte layer for the layer underneath. And so you won't get the effect of the Gaussian blur on your actual chroma, your cutout footage, but you're getting the matted layer. It's really hard to explain. Uh, maybe one day when I actually do finally get After Effects properly, I'll make a video about it. There's, I think there are one or two people who've mentioned this before. Uh, it's something I figured out myself because in the past I used to have trial versions of After Effects and I did use that. But it's a very good technique. If you Just put a small amount of blur, like just one or two percent, can help blur out stuff enough to give you a very, very clean key. As you can see, this is a 98% clean key. Okay, uh, thank you for watching and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Bye.